This is Michael Gershman with North Beach Community TV and NorthBeachNow.com here at the Lions Club building for the weekly Community Voices meeting. And we are here today with Greg Claycamp from the Coastal Community Action Program. Greg. Good morning, Michael. Welcome to Ocean Shores and give us a little bit of a preview as to what you're gonna be talking about today. Sure. I'm the director of our Housing and Community Services Department, and I'm here to talk to you this morning about several of our programs, including rental assistance, utility assistance, weatherization, and home repair. Thank you. Would you like, you're, you're going to be elaborating on all those things over the upcoming hour, right? Okay, well, good morning. My name's Greg Claycamp. I'm the Director for Housing and Community Services with Coastal Community Action Program. We are the Community Action Agency for Grace Harbor and Pacific Counties. And we offer a bunch of different programs in, in both counties, um, including rental assistance, homelessness intervention and coordinated entry programs, in-home care. We operate senior nutrition and the senior centers in a number of communities in both counties and kind of on and on and on. But this morning I'm gonna focus on four programs that are offered through my department. Um, one is the Treasury Rental Assistance Program or TRAP. The second is the Low Income Housing Energy Assistance Program, or LIHEAP. And then I'm also going to discuss weatherization for low income families and the Home Repair Loan Program, which is also for qualifying low income families. So I'm gonna start with TRAP. So the Treasury Rental Assistance Program is one of the big rental assistance programs that you've probably heard a, a bit about. This comes out of the federal legislation authorizing assistance during the COVID emergency. And it provides rental assistance in communities throughout the country that have been impacted by COVID to help folks who rent and have gotten behind on their rent during the COVID emergency to get caught up and stay in their homes. As you're probably aware, there's been a moratorium on evictions for most of the COVID emergency. That moratorium has been extended locally in Washington State by Governor Inslee. Um, there have also been some extensions nationally on the eviction moratorium, but those are of constitutional questionability. And so it's not clear how long the, the federal mandates to to prevent evictions are going to continue. In either case, this is a program that will help make low-income households whole with their landlords, and if they have arrears for the period of, of the COVID emergency, get paid up and stay in their homes. So what does that mean? That means that if you have filed for unemployment, or experienced any other financial hardship related to the COVID emergency, beginning in March of 2020, you may qualify for this assistance. The assistance will pay for up to 15 months of rent. That can include three months in advance rent. So if you're behind now, or you're about to get behind, and you know that you're gonna be impacted over the next few months, this program can pay some rent in advance. To qualify for the program, your household income has to be no more than 80% of the area median income. And we'll provide some information in handouts that you all have that have a table that shows what those income levels are for single persons and larger households. But basically that's it. As long as you can attest to, say in good faith, that you've been impacted by COVID that your income is no more than 80% of the area median income, and your landlord agrees to accept this payment in lieu of whatever you owe for the period and keep you in your home, you can qualify for this assistance. This program's kind of unique because the landlord can initiate the request as well as the tenant. And usually, um, 
for the programs that have come up during the COVID emergency, it's only been the tenant who could initiate the assistance. And we have a ton of small landlords in Grays Harbor County who have one or two rental properties and maybe have a long-term tenant who's been impacted by COVID and hasn't been able to pay rent. And they're getting into the situation now where for their properties, their, their mortgage is in danger. So this program will help the tenant and landlord work together to make not just the tenant whole, but the landlord whole as well. And hopefully they'll be able to continue to own those properties and make those rentals available in our community. So a couple of things that you do need to apply for this. We, we will take your attestation about income. We'll take your attestation um, about arrearages. The landlord does have to agree that this will make them whole and they won't seek any other payment for you. And that's important because rents in some of our communities are pretty high. And this program will only pay up to 150% of fair market rent for the unit. So fair market rent is what's the average price for say a two bedroom apartment. In our communities in Grays Harbor, that's $820 according to the federal calculation of what a fair market rent is. So that means this program could only pay up to $1,230 for a two bedroom unit. If your rent is higher than that, the landlord has to agree to accept that. The other thing that you need to qualify for this program is a copy of your lease, because we need to know that you had a lease in place at the time that the rent is supposedly owed. Um, and how much that rent was, because we don't want folks to take advantage of the program and say, oh yeah, yeah, I, I, I had a place or I had a tenant and I was charging them $1,230 for that unit for the last 15 months, but there's no evidence of it. We want to be responsible with the funds. It's a pretty flexible program to begin with, but we want at least that level of assurance that the person who's applying really did does all rent and that the landlord really did have a lease for that period of time. So I'm going to stop there with that description and ask if you have any questions. Okay, so a couple of things about the program and its status right now. This has been a really, really popular program. We first opened up the referral line for this program Actually, it's an online scheduler on our web page, and that information is on your handout. It's just coastalcap.org if you want to find us on the web. There's an online scheduler there, but because the demand was so high for this program, we were open for about two and a half hours in the middle of August, and we had appointments scheduled by the end of that two and a half hours through the end of September, about 250 appointments. So we closed it with the expectation that we would be reopening it in mid-September. We still think that's going to happen. However, I was informed this morning that we've got a little wrinkle with the program, which is that while we're doing a really good job of spending this money in Grays Harbor County, some other counties around the state aren't. And so we had expected this program to be available through the end of 2022. It may only be available through the end of 2021. There'll be another rental assistance program that replaces it, but a program called TRAP may only exist for a couple of months. So keep an eye on our webpage. We will have an announcement, I assume within the next week, about when we'll reopen for the next round of appointments for this rental assistance. And again, if you don't get scheduled now, don't panic, don't worry. There will be a successor program. It may just have a different name and the, the eligibility criteria might be a little bit different. Okay, again, if there are no questions on TRAP, I'll move on to LIHEAP. Ready? Okay, LIHEAP, this is a program that's been around forever. Um, for at least the last three decades, most community action programs have had a, a low-income home energy assistance program. 
And for folks that are familiar with the program, usually it opens around October. And historically, it's kind of a, a fall, winter, maybe early spring program because the funding generally runs out. For the last few years, and particularly during the COVID emergency, we received more funding than we have in the past. And it's really turned into a year-round program. LIHEAP will help low-income households with a grant that's actually paid to your energy utility provider uh, to basically help you pay your bills. But it doesn't pay the bill exactly. What it does is, if you qualify, and for LIHEAP you need to, there's a different standard, you have to have an income that is no more than 150% of the federal poverty level. It's really, really close to the other measure, but it's calculated a little differently. Um, there's also a table in the handout that shows you what, what those income levels are. If you are paying an energy utility bill or your landlord pays an energy utility bill that's incorporated as part of your rent, then you'll be eligible for this program if you are at or below that 150% of poverty level. And basically, you make an appointment with us. There's also an online scheduler for this, or you can call our main office at 360-530-5111. I don't usually give that number. I may have just made up a number, but you've got it in your packet. But you can either call our office or or go to our website and schedule for this program. And basically it's a block grant that you're eligible for once a year that will pay a grant to the energy company. It may be $300, it may be $600. It just depends upon your household size and what your utility rates are that you can receive annually as long as you meet those criteria. Now during COVID, there's also a change to this program where in the past you could only apply once a year and get assistance once and then you couldn't get it again. There's a special allowance that just went into effect that does allow us to pay all arrearages for folks who, who have a back bill. Now there's also been a moratorium in place that keeps your utilities from being shut off. That's going to go away again at some point. And this program will help anybody who's received LIHEAP in the past and owes arrearages get caught up. Now, if you've had LIHEAP in the past, the good news is we already took care of you. We've talked to the utility companies in Pacific and Grace Harbor counties, and we have a list of everybody that received assistance through LIHEAP in the last year, and we've already arranged to pay any any arrearages that you have on your account so hopefully that helps for anybody going forward and making a new request for assistance you should be eligible for both you would be eligible both for the one-time grant and during the emergency to have your back bill paid contact us that program is open now and um, anybody can apply anytime I want to go back to the Treasury Rental Assistance Program for a moment because I should mention at this point that LIHEAP only pays energy utility bills. You can also get utility assistance for water, sewer, garbage, other utilities through the Treasury Rental Assistance Program, and it will also cover up to 15 months of arrearages on utilities other than energy assistance. So that's a kind of assistance we don't usually have in the community and we're really excited to have it right now. Questions about LIHEAP? Hearing none, I'll move on to weatherization. So part of the big federal grant that provides us with the assistance through the LIHEAP energy program also provides us with funding to help low-income households with weatherization of their homes. So if you have a home and you need insulation in the attic, in the floors, in the subfloor, if you need, say, new equipment, your, your heating units, your cadets are not working and they need to be replaced, something like that, this program can also help you out. There's yet another qualifier for this program, and that's 200% of the 
uh, federal poverty level. So it's, it's a little more generous program in terms of who can apply. Any household who's at that 200 or less percentage of federal poverty level can apply for the weatherization program. We do have a back list on, on this program, which we're working to, to whittle down as much as we possibly can. In the past, we've done 20 to 30 weatherization projects in a year. Um, we're trying to get that up to 50 or 60. So we're basically trying to double our program and it's a really great program. It'll come in and you know it can help with with not just the insulation but other small home repairs and it works really well in connection with another program we call HRLP which is Home Repair Loan Program. Now I want to make clear for weatherization the person who's applying doesn't pay anything. The grant pays the cost for weatherizing your home. You do have a voice in that program to help choose contractors if you know somebody or it has to be a licensed contractor and it has to be somebody who who is contracted with us but you can choose amongst the contractors who contract with us for that program the home repair loan program also has the same income requirement 200 percent or less of federal poverty and it's really unique because you actually, through this program, qualify for a loan to have repairs made on your home. And it can be things in addition to that weatherization stuff that will get paid for for another program. So this is the program if you needed a new roof, if you need a new floor, if the bathrooms need to be updated in the house to, to meet ADA. Both the weatherization and HRLP programs prioritize older community members, folks with disabilities, in addition to just being low income. And those two programs together can make a really significant difference in the condition of somebody's home. With the loan program, you don't actually get the loan through, through CCAP, you get the loan through a local bank, but we facilitate that process there is an interest rate attached to the loan, but it's very low. It's based upon inflation index numbers. For 2021, the interest rate on these loans is 1.4%, which is a pretty good deal. <laughs> Even in this current environment where interest rates are very, very low, they're super low with this program. It's also a deferred loan, which means you can make payments, but you don't have to until the point where you sell the home or the home otherwise transfers ownership and then the principal is due in, in full. So this is a, a program that can help you get your house fixed up. If you are on a fixed income and can't afford to make the payments, you don't actually have to. It could be incorporated into the sale price of the home at some point in the future where you sell the home. Now, you do have to maintain occupancy for a while. This is not a program that's available for folks who want to flip homes and make a bunch of money immediately. You got to stay in the home for at least five years. Um, but again, um, we really, really love to do this program because it makes such a difference in people's lives. For the weatherization and the HRLP programs, you just call our offices. We don't have an online scheduler for that, but you can call our offices and just ask for the program and you'll get connected. Um, again, there's a waiting list, but we're moving through the waiting list. And as with weatherization, we want to get to where we're basically doubling the volume of houses that we do right now. Any questions on those two programs? Susan, am I seeing a hand up over there? Yes, it is. I'm, I'm usually trying to wear both, and I'm really happy that I don't have either one on my face right now. Yeah. Yes. The second set of programs, they are home ownership people who own their homes? They are.
yes, absolutely, that is the goal in both cases to help people stay in their homes. Uh, with the weatherization and home repair programs, it, the goal is also to improve the quality of the homes. So on the repair program, that would be perhaps something as small as a ramp um, it could be, although there are other programs that will pay for things like ramps. So if you need that, give us a call and we may be able to connect you with a different program that, that can take care of that very specific need. There are other programs that, that will take care of kind of specific needs like that that are still pretty pricey if you're the individual paying for it. But things like ramps, um, the energy utilities have programs that will, that will install mini splits. Um, the, those air conditioning units outside of the home, things like that. So give us a call for any of those needs and, and let us see if there may be another program that will assist you in addition to the weatherization and home repair programs. So that's very helpful, Greg. So anybody who is searching for anything Absolutely. can call you and you can direct them where they need to. We'll sure try. Um, and our staff are pretty knowledgeable about the resources that other agencies have throughout the community and very happy to connect you to them. You know, we do a lot of collaboration with other agencies. So, for example, I, I mentioned that we have a $40,000 cap for the home repair program. And there's not really a cap on the weatherization, but, but there's kind of an expectation of, of what it's going to cost. Um, we often partner with NeighborWorks, which is another community agency here who does similar work around home improvements and investment. And they have other programs and sometimes we can coordinate with them and, and levy additional funds to invest in somebody's home. So, you know, they like that too because it's making the best use of their funds. I should mention in terms of other resources um, that we usually don't have mortgage assistance. The vast majority of, of funding tends to focus on rental assistance. I do expect that over the next couple of years we will have a modest amount of rent of mortgage assistance becoming available. And by modest I mean probably no more than like $150,000 a year. Um, which if you just say $150,000 sounds like a lot of money and then if you look at your mortgage doesn't sound like very much at all. Uh, but we will have limited assistance and we will probably distribute that in partnership with NeighborWorks. Okay. Any other questions on any of these programs? This was a really, really top level overview. You know, our staff are really happy to talk to you and answer any questions that you might have if you think about the programs. Um, it's 360-533-5100 if I garbled the number last time. I've had time to think about it and that's the right number. But give us a call. The initial scheduling process, we'll talk to you. We can at least start application processes on phone or online. Um, occasionally we need to do some transfer of paperwork in person, but with the COVID emergency, we've got really good at avoiding that. Um, we, we continue to serve several hundred folks a month. Um, and have throughout COVID, and we've done that by adapting. We've set up Zoom rooms in the parking garage at our main building in Aberdeen, so you don't actually have to come into the bu building and make contact with somebody. If you've got phone or internet access, then we, we try to do the appointments remotely at your home. We've gotten really tech savvy really, really quickly. Susan? Questions. Good. The program that they repair, uh -huh. does that Yes, absolutely. Yes, for both weatherization and for the home repair program, uh, manufactured homes are eligible. Thank you. And we do have a provision in Ocean Shores where people are allowed to live in trailers. Yes. Is it covered as well? Uh, you mean like RV style trailers? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, give us a call and my my weatherization staff who are far more knowledgeable about their program than I am will know the answer to that question. Or I will follow up, I will tell you what, Susan, I will follow up and get you that information so you can post that would be it. Helpful. I have a meeting with them this weekend. Okay. That would be great. Thank you.
Sure. So uh, I mentioned at the beginning, Coastal Community Action Program is, is a community action agency. So the community action agencies date from the mid-60s um, and Lyndon Johnson's initiatives around the war on poverty and the Great Society. Um, these are, these are anti-poverty community action agencies that are in most communities throughout the country. Our agency first incorporated in 1967, and we've been acted, active ever since. Uh, we have grown tremendously in just a few years. So traditionally, kind of, a, kind of the usual cap, we, we served both counties. We have offices in Aberdeen, that's our main office. We also have satellite offices in South Bend and Long Beach. Um, five years ago, I think we probably had 30 employees. Today we have 250. So uh, the growth has been just, has been very quick for our agency. Um, and a lot of that expansion has been in a couple of areas. We have an income and in-home care program that's very active in both counties, and that has grown quite a bit over the last few years. Uh, but we've also really expanded our supported employment program and our supported housing programs, where we, in, in those two programs, have several hundred enrollees at any time where we're working with folks on getting uh, located in housing, moving from housing instability or homelessness to some sort of permanent housing, to safe housing. Um, that program has, has grown hugely. We've also added some really critical needs programs in the community where, where we, we had kind of yawning holes for many, many years. So for example, uh, CAP opened a voluntary youth shelter in Aberdeen that, sues, that serves the entire area last March. Um, and it sounds small when I say it's only a six bed facility, but, but kids tend to stay there for two weeks or a month and then move through. So what that actually translates annually is 80 to 100 kids will be staying at that facility. And it's been full since we opened. Uh, so we look for those kinds of needs in the community as places for us to expand and try to meet needs. We also look for partnerships. We recently added a, a presence out at, at the wellness clinic in Elma where we're working with Summit Pacific Medical Center. They make referrals to us and we try to see folks as they come in through the emergency department or other programs at the clinic. Um, we are starting to, to work more aggressively around developing new affordable housing in our communities. We have 24 modular units that'll be coming online early next year where we'll prioritize folks who are fleeing domestic violence, or re-entering our communities from incarceration, family reconciliation. Um, we just do a lot of stuff. And I really encourage you to visit our website because our programs are all outlined there and you can find out a little bit about everything that we do. What about if people want to donate to you? Ah, um, you can do that too. They'll go to the website, it will, it will give you that option. Uh, you also mentioned where does our funding come from? It comes from just uh, various sources, but, but primarily federal, state, and local and governmental funding for us. We do also have some foundation grants, but, but those are kind of our, our big tickets. Federal like HUD grants, state grants through the Department of Commerce, local grants with Pacific County and with Grace Harbor County. And that would be the Treasury Rental Assistance, or TRAP program, which provides both rental and utility assistance, up to 15 months of assistance for folks who qualify. And you can qualify if you've been impacted economically or otherwise by COVID, and your income, household income, is no more than 80% of area median income. Uh, we talked about the LIHEAP program that can provide one time or one time annually energy grant assistance to your utility provider if you qualify there and you qualify if you are, your household income is no more than 150% of federal poverty level. Right now during the COVID emergency for LIHEAP, we can also pay arrearages and if you've received 
LIHEAP in the past year, congratulations, we've already covered that. Your, your, your bill should be covered for the, the period beginning back in March 2020 forward. If you're a new applicant, we can also pay your current arrearages during the emergency. After that, we go back to the, the annual one-time grant model. Weatherization, it's 200% of federal poverty level and we can help weatherize your home. There is no charge to you for that program. Um, and that's things like insulation, repairing faulty equipment, faulty heating equipment in the home, and then the Home Repair Loan Program, or HRLP, also 200% of federal poverty level. You can get a loan based upon the value of your home for up to $40,000 to make significant home repairs to, to help improve the livability of the home. Give us a call or check our website. And the website again is? The website is coastalcap.org. Greg, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. You're very welcome.